Well, tonight from a jam-packed Ramblage Coliseum in Manhattan, Kansas, the second-ranked Kansas Jayhawks in town to take on the Wildcats of K-State. And let's take a look at the standings, the top half in the Big 12. KU on top, 8-0. Then comes Oklahoma all alone at 6-2. Tech, Missouri, and Texas all nodded at 5-3. Everybody, Ron Franklin along with John Sunbold, and welcome to what is always an interesting cross-state rivalry. The good news is K-State has won two conference games in a row, playing the best basketball game, they, best basketball they played all year. The bad news is the guys who are in town have won 18 straight in Manhattan, Kansas. That's hard to figure, John. Well, K-State's number one against Kansas in this building, Bramlage Coliseum. And the key, you know, last night we watched the Super Bowl. Bill Belichick slowed down a juggernaut in the St. Louis Rams. Right. Jim Woolrich has to do the same thing. Kansas State has to slow this Kansas team down. Kansas last Monday, 105 versus Missouri on Saturday, 100 points against Colorado. They've got to slow them down, contain them, and make it a half-court game played in the 60s or 70s. Well, John, here are the starting lineups brought to you by the Knights of Columbus. Reed, Williams, Buchanan, Seabrand, and Pasco, the starting five for the Wildcats of K-State. And for the Jayhawks, Miles, Boshi, Heinrich, Collison, and Drew Gooden. The series history. 22 straight that Kansas has won. The last time uh, to win against Kansas, January the 17th, 1994. The last win in Manhattan, boy, back in 1983. Channing and cheering always happens when a cross-state rival comes to town and the, the kids, meaning the spectators and the players, are tired of hearing about the streak 18 in a row. Well, this Wildcat team a couple weeks ago, you might have wondered, but the win against Texas and the win against Oklahoma State has caused some excitement in Manhattan. Well, good hustle defensively on the part of K-State, and they will get the basketball. Roy Williams, 14th season at KU. 31 and 4 against the Wildcats. And a man defensively by this Kansas team. I want to take a look at number 11, Larry Reed on the offensive end for Kansas State. The point guard runs the show, scores the points. Nick Williams stepped on the sideline as you look at Jim Waldrich, his second season here. Came up from Sam, our Southwest Texas down in San Marcos. With yeah. perfect execution. A little back screen, no communication. Terrific pass by Miles. Boshi working against Nick Williams. Triangle offense made famous by Kansas State. Former coach, Tex Winter, now with the Los Angeles Lakers. Williams driving, ball is blocked by Boshi, and it'll come back to Reed. Reed for three. Yeah, he's got to have a big night. Good start for Larry Reed. Quickly to the other end. Good job in transition by the Wildcats. Ball is tipped by Collison. Tries to throw it off of Reed, and here come the Wildcats. Ron, Kansas State quick enough and fast enough to get back defensively. Pass intended for Pasco, and they turn it over. One of the things that Jim Woldridge said this afternoon is we have got to make sure we either get pressure on the ball as they bring it across but to slow them down so that they don't get in to the front court so quickly. Well, we saw it last Monday against Missouri. They will shoot a lot of layups. Even if you score on one end, Kansas pushes it so quickly, and they'll lay it in. Heinrich off to a good start himself. Heinrich probably, he's always been very, very good, but probably has improved and just having a great season. Son of a coach plays that way and a whistle and a foul inside and I think they've just gotten Quentin Buchanan with the foul. Well you mentioned Kirk Heinrich his outside shooting ability last Monday against Missouri 23 points a season high but what was more impressive than that is his defensive job on Kareem Rush and that's difficult when your assignment is to guard the best player on the other team and then also do it on the offensive end. Heinrich for three again. And Buchanan has to close more quickly on that shot. Buchanan at 6'7", long reach, terrific defender, but Heinrich has created enough space with good down screens. Well, Coach Waldridge has gotten part of what he wanted. He slowed him down, getting the ball down the floor as Heinrich comes up with the block. Here comes Miles, and they got numbers. Boshi for three. Gooden battles for the rebound. He gets it away from Reed and knocked out of bounds by Pasco. 
Now you'll take a look. The down screen comes and look at how much space Heinrich has. Buchanan at 6'7". Again, gets into the shot line of most shooters, but that much space, this kid's going to knock him down. John, the point I was going to make, Wildridge has gotten what he wanted as far as slowing him down a bit, but in half court, all of a sudden it's an 8-3 game, and KU does as good a job as anybody at having that knockout punch early. Well, you take a look at the percentage, field goal percentage, number one in the country at nearly 52%, average over 90 points of ballgame. This is an explosive team. Ron, all five starters can score, so it doesn't matter which one gets it they're unselfish they average over 20 assists a ball game but they had three players with 20 or better this past weekend as Seabrand gets it comes back to Reed but picked up nicely by Miles Reed not there Collison gets banged in the face by Pasco well you mentioned this weekend the Colorado game Heinrich had 16 Collison good and Boshi all had 20 they had 58 at halftime what a start again tonight Jim Aldrich another three this time by Miles, and KU on fire. Well, we've seen the ball movement. They've been efficient. They've been quick. Miles, a terrific freshman, sees the floor. Good pass, a good and easy finish. And we talked about Miles on the offensive end with assists. Can also spot up himself. Good pass from Heinrich. Boshi, Boshi Heinrich, and Miles all handle it and all pass it well. Well, there's more basketball on the way. Why I made against Utah at midnight at ESPN2. Nick Jacobson and the Utes looking to go 7-0 in conference play. But they'll have to get past Josh Davis and the Cowboys, who are right behind him in the Mountain West at 5-1. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. And Utah, you see, at 6-0. Now have the longest winning streak in the nation at 19. Cincinnati was upset yesterday. Congratulations, Tom Preen, Marquette Golden Eagles. Coach Creeney, longtime friend. That was a huge win. Really happy for him. Four of the five starters for KU have scored already. In fact, Boshi, who is one of their better shooters, uh, is the only man that uh, is sitting with a goose egg right now. But that won't be long. That's pick your poison. I mean, which one do you defend and double team? Can't leave any of them open. They're too good offensively. Kansas three of four from beyond the arc, and K-State one of two. Clinton Buchanan. In the corner to Williams. Cross courts it. Reed left open, but threw it to Seabrand. And they're going to say touch last by Seabrand. Ron, this Kansas team will double team you at any part of the floor, and they usually use the baseline or the sideline to trap you. If that happens, you got to swing the ball. Shooters have to be ready to shoot. Sometimes the extra pass, don't worry about it. Get it up if you're open. Three turnovers against K State. Down by 10 points, and we have not even played four minutes yet. Want to force Gooden to his left and make him shoot jump shots. He got inside the paint there. He will kill you. Well, Kansas on the road, and this is like being at home for them. They are six of seven from the field to start the ball game with three three-pointers. But I marvel at this ball club, Ron. It, they're so patient with each other. Pass to inside. Got to have more of that. Focus pass to a good score. Coming off two terrific ball games against Texas and Oklahoma State. Offensive foul on Nick Collison. So we'll take a break. One of the reasons that the Jayhawks are six of seven, good with his fourth point. We'll be right back. Has jumped off to a 10 point lead. And a reminder tomorrow, Winter X game six, day four, at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Some of the world's most daring athletes compete in Hillcross, men's snowboarding slope style and skiing superpipe. Be sure to catch all the action from Aspen, Colorado. Tomorrow, the Winter X game is number six. Ron Franklin, John Sundle, coming to you from Manhattan, Kansas. And I mean, the Jayhawks have jumped out of here. They have five assists, six field goals, six of seven. K-State does not even have a rebound as yet. They are two of five from the field. This team understands how to take a crowd out of it in a hurry, don't they? No question about that. Larry Reed, who has improved dramatically this year. Back to Buchanan along the baseline. Nice, soft runner. Q is what they call him. Clinton Buchanan scores quickly at the other end as Heinrich deals it back to Collison and the ball knocked out of bounds by Reed. Once you score, again, I don't think Kansas State can allow Kansas to take the ball from the net and throw it close to half court. That inbounds pass came all the way to half court. That allows Kansas to get off to a run. A little 2-3 zone now by this Wildcat team. Boshi. 
Seabrand grabs the rebound at the other end. Pasco. And he got it. Well, one of the best running big men in Big 12. Purvis Pasco at 6'9. His dad is here. His dad this weekend got to see him play for the first time in Division I here in Manhattan. He stayed over for this ball game tonight. Ball's on the floor. Pasco battles for it. Williams tries to take it away. And uh, the possession arrow says it'll stay right where it is. KU basketball. Simeon will come in. Collison will get a break. There's a look at uh, Purvis Pasco Sr. Out of Clearwater, Florida. Anxious? A little nervous? His son has been playing well lately for Jim Woolridge. Buchanan back out the high. Difficult team to zone because of the ability of the three guards to shoot it so well from the outside. Heinrich well behind the arc and he switches in his third three-pointer of the night. Watched him warm up uh, tonight, Ron. He had a smile on his face. He knocked in about every shot he was shooting, looking at a couple of his buddies on the team, and you could tell he felt good when he walked into Bramble. John, let me ask you something. We did the Oklahoma game a couple of Saturdays ago. He started the second half. Miles set it out, and it was Heinrich who literally took over the ball club, and they jumped out to like a 22 to 3 run. And I felt like confidence wise that that just did the final stamp of approval as far as Heinrich is concerned. Yeah, you agree? He, yeah, he's just been terrific all season long. So I think he's uh, could be player of the year the Big 12. And again, a basket's made, half court pass all the way to get the ball up. Kansas State back defensively. Gooden puts it on the floor, reverses that turnaround, knocks it away, comes back to Heinrich. Boshi for three. Now he's on the board. They run good defense, but you must rebound. Two more in Santa trying to calm his team down. They do not want to get in a track meet, even though they're home for this Jayhawk team. Simeon in the ball game, the big freshman out of Leavenworth, Kansas, right up the road from Lawrence. That's going to be a reach in by Bochi. It'll be his first and the team's second. Wayne, a six foot eight, 245 pound freshman. And we saw him in his first outing. He had a bum knee to start the year. We saw him in his first game. Uh, John and I did that one against Wake Forest. He played 15 minutes and kind of double double his first outing. Well, physical player, strong. Makes his presence felt when he comes in the ball game. Seabrand gets it back to Williams. Seabrand again, quickly along the baseline, gets by Gooden. Back out to Reed. Good pass, good move by Seabrand. You understand when you make the move and go to the basket, this Kansas team is going to help each other. So you got to find shooters, and shooters have to be available, usually weak side for open jump shot. Nice bounce pass. Gooden misses the short runner, and here comes Reed. Good decision. Back it up. Find some numbers. One of the things that Reed is really impressed on is dishing the ball and finding the open man. De Jesus off the mark. And it's Simeon who comes down with the rebound. Simeon's got a soft touch out there, right? Not there. Candy bounces the ball away, gets it over to Reed. And here they run on the wing. Goal to the count of Gilson De Jesus, a junior transfer out of South Kingston, Rhode Island. Good shooter, and Roy, Roy Williams taking a look at Kirk Heinrich asking why. Tough angle to make this basket. Going to miss it. Well, it wasn't Kirk. Might have been Sidney. Heinrich with the bouncer in traffic to Gooden. Not there, and he's fouled, and I believe Lusich. Our Silich is uh, going to be the man who gets the foul. Anytime you play against a top-ranked team, you have to be mentally prepared. Seabrant that time got caught. And if you can't make the play, you don't make the play. I mean, you cannot take chances. If you miss it, it allows good to simply turn and go to the rim. Good foul to put him on the line. Not Silich, it actually was Gilson de Jesus who was uh, charged with the foul. Heinrich goes out. Langford in the ball game, and now Miles comes back in. Gooden will get a breather. 
and Collison that checks back into the lineup. It's amazing how many people now they can come off the bench with who can get you double figures, and particularly the youngsters. I mean, we have talked that Langford <laughs> didn't get all the billing some of these other guys did, but he can light them up. Well, Langford valuable in that Oklahoma win the first half. Kind of kept Kansas in that ball game for a while. Boshi on the run. Nice job in transition by Williams. This is Miles, and he had it blocked, and they're qualified. Again, the ability for this Kansas team of making the pass up ahead. They do not waste time dribbling. Well, they all catch it, they look, they pass it, they don't waste time holding it, they don't bounce it around like some teams do and some players do. Larry Reed is guilty of the foul. His first and the team's third. Jim Waldrich, good guy, trying to get his program going here at K-State. As I mentioned, Southwest Texas did a very nice job. Assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls before he came here with Tim Floyd. Yep. Take a look at Aaron Miles' numbers. Been solid this freshman season at point guard. Some compare Aaron Miles to a Jock Vaughn or maybe go back farther to, Dar to Darnell Valentine. Two great players in Kansas uniform. Interesting that Miles, such a great athlete, they talked him into coming back out for football after the season that started his senior year. And he became an all-star quarterback. Michael Lee, who was out of the same school, was a tight end on that team. Crowd wanted a foul. Atchison got bumped by Boshi, but none was called. Finus Atchison, somewhat of a spark plug for this Kansas State team, has to score. Seabrant with a travel, kind of a one, two, three, without putting it on the floor. And we'll take a break. 24-15, number two, Kansas. 24 to 15, and John, let's go back to 1983. Oh, my senior year, Ron. A Hurt Fieldhouse, a uh, treasure here in Manhattan, a tough place to win. And Carl Henry, leading scorer for the Jayhawks that season, a basket, but it was the senior captain, Les Kraft, led this Wildcat team to a win. 1983, wow, a long time ago, huh? Eddie Sutton was asked after the ball game on Saturday after his team fell to K-State about this rivalry, and I'm sure Eddie didn't care about talking about another rivalry, but he had an interesting comment to make. He said, if Kansas wins again on Monday, I think what I've tried to do is move the series back to Ahern. I have heard some people in town talk about that. Let's, uh, let's try it once at Ahern Fieldhouse. One of the toughest places in college basketball. Bobby Knight once played there and said he would never play there again. Jack Harmon had some terrific ball clubs there in the 80s. Late 70s. John was simming in the ball game at Gooden sitting on the bench. You got an All-American who was out, but Simeon who is headed to be an All-American as Pasco scores. They're going to call an offensive foul. I oh. beg your pardon. Well, I thought that was going to be a three-point play. Great play by Reed, and you have to get that basket. Good penetration again. The help defense. You take the step in. And I think he's late getting there, standing under too. the rim. I do, too. That should have been an opportunity for a three-point play. Yep. 26 to 15. Pasco picks up the foul. Fourth team foul on the Wildcats. The point I was going to make a moment ago is you've got an All-American sitting on a bench, a young former high school All-American. Simeon comes in, and they play volleyball on the board. And it just it comes to a point where, okay, if you don't do that, Connison would have a mile. Great pass, good read, and you got a guy like Collison who I think is the forgotten one on this team at times. He had a big game first half on Saturday against Colorado. All right, they're doing all this without Heinrich, who is about to check back at the ball game. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. Still, the only guy now who hasn't scored is Simeon as they get the takeaway, and the ball knocked out of bounds by Pasco right here in front of us. Now take a look at reading the defense against the zone, the low screen you see by Langford at the bottom of the... Zone, Roy Williams known for that. His ball clubs maybe set more screens against zone defenses than any I've seen. 13-point game. If you were uh, you were at Lawrence on Saturday and you were commenting that Collison was, was really outstanding in that ball game. Got him the ball early and, and especially low, and he established his presence, and that opened everything up for the outside. Both she Langwood started hitting jumpers. And Gooden, as normal, had a double-double. Tony Atchison. Working against Tyler. Triple post offense, also known as a triangle offense, Ron. The key is spacing, good ball movement, and reading the defense. Seabrook, nice quick pass, but very hard from a close angle, and Buchanan couldn't hold on to it. Miles behind the back, a lot of gingerbread, and an offensive foul. You'd like your Miles either to stop earlier or 
as Roy Williams is pointing out, pass the ball. He had a guy on the wing. Again, his, this ball club does not waste time with the dribble. They're fun to watch. They also, as you pointed out a few minutes ago, they don't waste a lot of time getting back down the floor, do they? Mm -hmm. Seabrand on the field, going to be tied up. Looks like Langford, yep. And the error says it'll stay with K-State. Gooden comes in, and the freshman Simeon will go to the bench. Boy, well, nice to be able to give an All-American a breather and have somebody who is as active and strong as Simeon. Now that young man there, Wayne Simeon, is going to be a terrific player when he's done in his playing days at Kansas. Travis Canby, a freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, by Fork Union Academy, Virginia. Checks into the lineup. 6'9", 233. Lob pass. Canby went the wrong way, and we got the two big men with the numbers, and look at them run the floor. Ah, beautiful. Sharing the ball. Easy finish. Largest lead of the night, John. 30 to 15. Gooden averages over two and a half steals a ball game. He's quick, he's agile, he will guard out on the perimeter. Well, this Kansas ball club averages over 10 a, a contest at steps, don't they? Pasco, nice move to his left, couldn't get it to go. That's Gooden. And the other pass by Miles. Oh, Heinrich, quick, gets it over to Langford, but he puts up an air ball. Take a look defensively. Once they make the steal, watch them take off. All five guys on the move. Heinrich tells everybody to hold back. It's the two guys finish it, so they have balance on the defensive end. Isn't that amazing? Heinrich being the quarterback, yeah. and he's in the, not even to, to mid court yet. And you know what? To have confidence in your two big guys to finish. There's been a lot of guards that would look to two big guys ahead and go, oh, babe, I better help out. <laughs> Collison goes to the bench. And that means that Jeff Carey comes in. Jeff, the 6'11", 250-pound senior, Camden, in Missouri. Williams against Heinrich. Not there, and Heinrich saying he pushed off against me. Roy Williams standing up and saying to the official, he pushed off before the shot. Then we talked about Heinrich, uh, solid on the defensive end last Monday against Rush from Missouri. Nick Williams has had a good freshman start of a season. They didn't expect him to play as many minutes as he has in the starting lineup now. Good defender. Good composure on the floor. Does not make a lot of mistakes. Jim said one of the reasons that he was going to wait a little bit to bring him off the bench is because he matches better as far as the three-guard set with Kansas being 6-4. But being a freshman, he also was afraid he'd get in foul trouble early, and he said, I need his scoring punch. First point for Williams. 30 to 16, KU on top. We're just going under nine minutes left to play in this opening hand. Good. Nice dish. Carey got it. And Pasco cannot body up Gooden at 12, 14 feet from the hoop and let him spin it. Pasco's long enough. Let Gooden go for a jump shot, then challenge him. Get beat off the dribble. Gooden's too good. Williams touched. No, did not was not touched by Kansas. And it'll go back to the Jayhawks. Turnover number 10 for the Wildcats. Miles with the lob pass. Nice job as it's knocked away by Williams. Quickly inside to carry. Goes back to Boshin. Now good from 12. In one out, in one side and out the other. Unselfish play. Boshi, the best shooter on their team, pure shooter, gave it up to teammate Good. Well, the Jayhawks go to the sideline with high fives, and you can see why. 7.59 left in this opening half, and it is a 34 to 16 ball game. Tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2, college basketball from top conferences. You don't want to miss. 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, a Big Ten battle. It'll be Iowa at Indiana. Iowa trying to pay back what the Indiana did to them out in their state. And a doubleheader on ESPN2, 7 o'clock Eastern, number 7, Florida against South Carolina. And then at 9 o'clock, Providence takes on UConn in the Big East.
good matchup. Iowa and Indiana Hoosiers have been playing extremely well. Boy, they have. Conference. Ron Franklin, John Sunbowl coming to you from Manhattan, Kansas. And look at those numbers. 13 of 22, 59 percent for the Jayhawks. And K-State has 13 field goal attempts. Reed. Not there. Miles gets the long carry. his own followed nobody blocked him out Pasco could have put him on his backside and he did not well you're always taught that the uh, shooter is the first guy to know that he's not going to make one what Gooden has the ability to do is chase the ball more quickly than anybody else nice pass, pass. Seabrand missed the shot from point blank range beg your pardon Sulich Sulich yeah Devon Sulich got to convert well behind the arc. Misses that one. He's already got three three-pointers in this first half. K-State crowd wanting a run from the locals here. Put it up against Carey. That's a nice job of just staying right there. And Sudich gets the miss and puts it back. And you have to be careful how you make the run. You want to take good shots, still work your offense, make this Kansas team play on the defensive end. Don't take one quick shot and out because this Kansas team will uh, take off quickly. Nice job by Pasco against Gooden that time. Touch last by Miles. So we'll take a break. 6.29 left. Gooden, nine first half points for him. Gets his own follow. Right back. 18 Kansas on top. So far, though, it's been a good week for the Wildcats, John. Well, last week, or this week's been impressive. You knock off Texas when they come to town, and Pasco and Reed. Then on Saturday, Oklahoma State showed up, and you get another win against a highly ranked Oklahoma State Cowboy team that has been struggling. But uh, Jim Woolridge will take it with a big smile on his face. Interesting that you mentioned Eddie Sutton Ball Club because four and five in conference play. And John, I really think one of the big games for them and for the conference where everybody winds up is going to be the meeting on Wednesday as Texas Tech goes to Stillwater. A rematch where the uh, Red Raiders simply handled the Cowboys easily the second half down in Lubbock. Williams holds up too hard off the glass. And it looks like Langford with the foul. Team. I talked to some people here in Manhattan that were here at the game Saturday said there are a lot of bickering on the floor between players Can't have that. That's too good of a ball club. They've got to turn things around in a hurry They can ill afford to go to four and six Oklahoma State because they've still got they got to go to Missouri They uh, have got Oklahoma have to go to Texas, which has been a tough place for them to win Seabrand comes back into the lineup and Sudich will go to the bench Sulich from Split, Croatia. Langford with a rebound. Three on through. Good job by the Wildcats of getting back in transition. Simon, as you can see, back in the lineup. Malboshi. Plenty of time on the shot clock as Heinrich backs it back out. Good defense by this Wildcat team. Shot clock is at nine. Heinrich with the spin move, dishes off to Simeon, and he'll score with one second on the shot clock. Oh, what a back break. You play defense for 34 seconds. Simeon lays it in. So now Langford's the only man on the KU team that has played tonight who hasn't scored. You can it off the mark. Here comes Kansas running again. And Heinrich, he'll take it the distance. Not there, but on the follow, they score. It's Simeon again. Yeah, their big men run, and they're tough enough, and they're physical enough. When they get the, their hands on the ball, they keep it. Largest lead of the night, 22. And you can see on that trip down on the fast break, John, the K-State big guy is getting a little, a little wary. And when you tire, you're not obviously as physical rebounding the ball. Hey. He got bumped there. So yep. a foul. Tony Atchison, well off the mark. And Heinrich again just pushes it up. Double dribble. Now he 
does make many errors. Roy Williams is standing up and giving signals right now, but I talked to him before the ball game, and I said, I've had too many years of it myself. I know a bad back when I see one, and he injured his back working out today, and he's not going to be up very much hollering at the officials or anybody else tonight. I'm going to try to stay glued to the seat. Heck of a deal when you're trying to do your body well by working Sometimes, out. It hurts yeah. your back. Sometimes it's easier to stay. Kelvin Sampson had some back problems. Reed passed up the three. Seabrand with Collison right with a hand in his face. Ron, watch the difference in ball movement between the two teams. Kansas State are there catching the ball and they're standing and looking and then they'll dribble. Nebarosa scores. Marcelo Nebarosa out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Kansas does not waste time getting rid of it. Once you catch it, move it, move your body. Collison reverses that turnaround and scores. A clinic, yeah, he can put on a clinic in a low block. You know, one of the things that K-State has done so well on the perimeter, they have been an extremely good defensive team, but tonight, 56, almost 57% from the field by KU. Nine points for Gooden, eight points for Collison, nine for Heinrich. Most teams you play, you can pick one or two guys to defend extremely well and make other guys shoot. This Kansas team, you really can't. Your point is very well taken, John. Seabrand went up for the rebound, so did Collison. They got locked under Collison's arm. That's the reason for the reaction by the crowd. Well, the reaction, too, would say, hey, we're in Bramwich Coliseum, our home place. We'd love to get a whistle our way once this ball game, this first half especially. Vivarosa comes down with the rebound. 42 to 20. Jayhawks have not drawn a real deep breath so far. Here's Reed. Boshi all over him. Simeon working against Seabrant in the middle and put it up very quickly on the whistle on the foul. And Dave is going to be called for the foul as he banged Collison. You've got to take that ball. Seabrant's got to take it in the shoulders and turn it and go to the rim. Not fade away, not push away, because you're going to get bumped even further. Causes your shot to be here. So we are just under three minutes to play until halftime as you watch Collison turn and hit the jumper. 2 to 20 Kansas and the Mass Mutual Financial Group halftime report at Sports Center in game just ahead. Bill Pito and Digger Phelps, Kings versus Kid, Drew Gooden, big man on campus. Well, I would certainly think so. <laughs> it might be a little bit of a battle. He and Kirk Heinrich and the, there are other folks that are gaining on him. <laughs> what a talented lot. And John, the, the point that you made just a moment ago and having played college basketball and uh, been an All-American and played in the pros. Boy, normally two or three guys are the ones that you look for, but like right here, Lankford takes it up and Seifert will foul him. Seabrand. But you don't have one or two guys that you can isolate on. No, and it's uh, very unusual at any level you play. Good backdoor cut, good pass. And caught watching and not knowing where your man is. Putting a body on him so that you can feel when the backdoor cut is made. Langford, the freshman, very smooth. Got good rhythm to his jump shot. Solid with the ball. Seabrand with his first foul and the sixth team foul on K-State. Langford, a freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas, averaging almost eight a ball game. Going to take it all the way to the home score. score. Pretty move. Turn the corner. High off the glass. He's got nine to lead his team. pasco has got four, and he got those early, and he's been quiet here in the uh, later portions of this first half. Yeah, I'll take a look at Larry Reed. Turn in the corner. Gooden didn't stop him. Boy, what a good touch. Good figure roll. Senior season had a terrific year last year. Some big ball games. A win over ranked Iowa here. He had 31. He had 30 up at Iowa State in a close loss by his Wildcat team. So he is an explosive scorer. Knocked away by Viverosa. And now let's see the the possession error is going to say it'll stay with Kansas. Give him a timeout. So the timeout called by K-State, it'll be in their possession. You see, David Olson knocks it away from Gooden, and then he calls, desperately calls a timeout down at the bottom. 
the heat. So the Wildcats will continue it. Let's take a look at the top ten, John. Well, the top two teams are, uh, I think, separating themselves. So Maryland is outstanding. Oklahoma, big win. And Austin, Texas, Cincinnati losing. Alabama's playing well. Virginia, tough week. They lost to Duke and to Maryland. And then they had to travel. Big win for Missouri in Columbia. Gonzaga is that team that uh, may be the best team they've had there. That's uh, saying something. I agree with you, Joe. I, I think it is. The difficult thing, as far as uh, Virginia's concerned, how about this schedule for one week? Duke, Maryland, wow. Missouri on the road. So I wouldn't want to do it, and most coaches would want to do it. <laughs> Pete Gillen would probably say, I don't want to do it again. Rod Franklin, John Sunbull come to you from Manhattan, Kansas. Big Monday brought to you by Bud Light. About to go under two minutes left of this opening half, and Reed switches another one. Reed leads the team in scoring, assist, free throws, steals, and also in minutes played. In fact, we were told before the ball game, look for him to play 40. Langford hand in his face. Now back to Boshi. He's done a good job of looking up Boshi and knowing where he is. Yes. Quickly getting back to a good screen by Collison. Well, he got away from him, and that's the reason. If you leave him for one second, and I, they had just covered him up, and he got the high screen and knocks it down. Well, a natural shooter. Some guys are good shooters, and they work on it, and they practice it. Heinrich more uh, methodical practices. Oh, she's natural shooter. He can catch it. The release has been there probably his whole life. Two of four from beyond the three-point range tonight, and it's 47 to 24. De Barossa blocked by Good, put right back in his face. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of ten. Downtown Manhattan. And Reed is on fire, and he is the guy. You know, doesn't get enough publicity because his ball club is not ranked anywhere and not up to the top of this league. But Larry Reed could play for most teams. That's six assists for Miles in the first half. Well, they continue to get that back screen. Every time you think you got something conquered or solved with him, and then they do something a little bit better. Reed on the night, 6 of 11, 2 of 4 from beyond the yard. Total of 14 points. Atchison way downtown. They'll open up the bomb squad, partner. <laughs> So he's going to take a few of those. Well, they they got it under 20, John, so yep. that's the first step. Now get it under 10, and we've got a ball game. Five seconds, Langford falling away. On the foul, scoring. Miles put up the shot. Langford inside just before the horn went off. And we are at halftime. 51, Kansas 30, Kansas State. Send it to Bill Pito for the Mass Mutual Financial Group Halftime Report and Sports Center in game. Ron, thank you. Coming up, the NBA, it's Allen Iverson against Vince Carter, who would get the upper hand, and how Tom Brady spent his day after Sports Center in game halftime report after this. Part is brought to you by Direct TV, the number one digital satellite entertainment provider, and by Brand Jordan. Welcome back to Manhattan, Kansas. Second half action. And John Sunbowl, 51 to 30, our score here at halftime. And you know, when your team shoots 57%, you have 15 assists on 20 made baskets, and you out rebound the opposition 21 to 9. You don't have a lot to fuss about, do you? Ron, that's when the coach goes in and says, okay, guys, remember, second half, we're going the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> Keep playing and doing what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Well, here's a look at the direct TV first half stats. Well, the big key is right here what you're talking about, Ron. 15 assists on 20 baskets. That is how the game. Is supposed to be played. 57% from the field, turnovers under 10, points off turnovers high for Kansas. You know, Kansas State shooting a high field goal percentage for them. They're a team that only shoots about 43% on the year. So let's see if the Wildcats can get it going here in the second half. Back door. Oh, what a pass by Good. Losey scores. John, we're looking at halftime at the stats, and everybody who has played for KU has scored. In this ball game. And you take a look what Drew Gooden did right there. 6'10", he steps out. He makes a bounce pass to a guard cutting to the basket. Right on the money. Three-pointer, too hard. Seabrand pushes, and he's guilty of the foul. 
second one on him. Well, here's where Gooden out on the floor, the ball fake there. This is the second time that this play has worked. Hurt one in the first half, and this one open the second half. Collison had an outstanding mm -hmm. bounce pass also along the baseline. The big man showing that all facets of the game, they're very complete. Collison muscles it up and scores a receiver. Mm -hmm. Did you just use the word very complete? Yes, they are. Good move. Collison can spin either way when he gets a ball in the low post. Largest lead of the night, it's 25. Collison, the way he plays the post, Ron, it would be good for any high school player, junior high, any postman to get tapes of how Nick Collison works on the low block. 17 points for Reed. Looking for some help, is he? Heinrich. Fouled by Q. Quentin Buchanan. They can keep their spacing. They make you chase them because they're good shooters. The ball goes through the net and how quickly they get to the offensive end. That's interesting. Every time we have done Kansas this year, you have talked about an excellent job of spacing. Oh, well, and you can when you have such good shooters. I and mean, they understand how to give each other space because they're good shooters. Again, they do not waste time bouncing the ball so much. Take a look at Kirk Heinrich's numbers. When Snyder made a comment after last Monday night's ball game, he thinks Kirk Heinrich should be, could be, player of the year in the conference. Most people right now would probably put Drew Gooden there. Gooden's going to get a lot of votes for national player of the year. Start to say how that could happen. He might win national player of the year. Heinrich could, could win the award in the conference. Reed, strong to the hoop. Couldn't get it to go. Pasco with the follow. He'll get his own rebound. Blocked by Gooden. Seabrand has it knocked away, and here comes Bozier. Take a look at Pasco going up for the shot, and Gooden comes from behind, and uh, great block, all ball. Defense is tough inside. They're long, they're agile, quick off their feet. Jim Woolridge, I really, Ron, searching for a call. Would love to get any call. I think he's uh, even begging. Yeah, starting to say, look where he's standing. No, I think he's even begging him to see. <laughs> Tell you what, I will say this: uh, the Wildcats did not get a favorable whistle in the first half. 59-33. That was touched by Collison. Now Roy Williams is going to try to work him because he probably feels a couple calls now. Well, that's the third foul on Heinrich. Stepped out of bounds. And Heinrich had the unenviable position. If he had not stepped out of bounds, was he going to go to make the play, take a chance on getting the fourth foul or what? In and out. Unlucky in the shot. Heinrich with the follow. Great hustle. Came in among the trees, got it, and put it back up. Loose balls, second chances. That's why you're number two in the country. Heinrich now with 15. 12 for Collison, 9 for Gooden. Nick Collison with the foul. Second on him and the second team foul on the Jayhawks. comes to the bench he'll rest with those three fouls and number five Keith Langford the freshman out of Fort Worth will come into the ball game Reed nice crossover great quick step against Miles couldn't get it in the follow and side stayed with it Reed stayed with it put it back in I love how this young man plays 19 for him Told you everything he led the team in as Gooden has the ball blocked on the floor. They scramble for it. And Collison almost takes it away. Still on the floor, and here comes Reed. And they got numbers. Three on two. Reed back off to Williams and score. Nick 
Williams, the freshman out of Mansfield, Texas. But very quickly at the other end, fouled by Sulich. Kansas State finally came up with a turnover of their own in the push. Really, this layup is caused because Purvis Pasco runs the floor and gets Gooden out of the way. He's got to chase Pasco through. Williams had an easy layup. Good pass from Larry Reed. Nine turnovers, Kansas, 11 for K-State. Well, the lob pass inside. And it was blocked out front. Yeah, I think Pasco might have gotten his hand on that one. Reed has a terrific crossover dribble. Reed pulls up, the runner won't go. Offensive foul is called. Well, we talked about the defense of this Kansas team. Everybody helps out. Langford. Slides in from the weak side. Eastman was out on the right wing or left wing. Helped out knowing that if he doesn't get the call and if Larry Reed kicks the ball to his man, teammates going to pick up for him. A dozen turnovers, K-State. 44%, which is not horrible, but the opposition shooting 59%. Terrific delivery by Gooden. So Heinrich back in the ball game quickly after a short breather with three fouls. Reed inside and Pasco loses it. It'll stay with K State. Mentioned Gooden's ability to see the floor and then make the pass right on the money. Not many can do that in the country. His size. A two three matchup zone by this Kansas team. Reed left alone just long enough. He got it. 22. Around a hand in his shooter's face usually does not bother a good shooter. It's just uh, you lift the ball a little higher, just like Boshi. You actually want to jump by a shooter, maybe put the hand on the side of his head where you can't see, because then it may bother Boshi's got 11. Should have got three Jayhawks in double figures, one for K State, and of course that's Reed. Away in and out, unlucky in the shot. Boshi will come up and he will clear. Well, the Hastus is a good shooter. Just got to knock him in when he's open. Knocked away. Heinrich tries to save it and goes into the scorer's table. Good save. Gooden give the assist to Heinrich, whether you do officially or not, because he gave up his body for it. This Kansas team plays with such poise and patience, Ron, and they do not worry about the score. I mean, they just keep playing. Well, for instance, what you're talking about, Heinrich, five of seven, three of four from beyond the arc, four of four from the free throw line, five rebounds, five assists. How about this play? He's into the rope. Nice save. Gooden simply catches, turns, knocks in the shot. only a 54% free throw shooter. Collison goes to the bench, and Simeon checks back in for the Jayhawks. Pasco, seven double-doubles on the year. Junior college transfer from Pensacola. Junior college played down there for Paul Swanson. Interesting, the double-doubles in the conference. He's got seven, and Dwight Gooden over double what anybody else in the conference has at 17. going to be an offensive foul. Of course, I'm talking about Drew Gooden with the 17 double-doubles. 
This is first so there's a timeout, 68 to 40, 28 point margin for the Jayhawks. Presented by Bud Light, number two Kansas, not disappointing. Ron Franklin, John Sunbull. I'll tell you what, Roy Williams not going to let this team rest on their laurels or anything else. Now he mm -mm. he got upset during the timeout. He didn't like an inconsistency of play. Well, and I believe he addressed uh, Drew Gooden. The referee told Drew to get some words with him, and Roy Williams took care of that in a hurry. The Jesus working against Langford. Sulich. Shot clock about to go under 10. Atchison got it. Yeah, that's what Finest brings when he comes off the bench. Instant offense. Simeon with the turnaround and a nice soft touch from a 6'9", 250-pound player. Well, can't allow any of these Kansas offensive players in the low post to establish themselves right on the low block. They will get some damage to you. Telegraphed it. Gooden jumped up and got the steal. Well, a lot of dribbling and a costume of turnovers is taken away by DiBarossa. Good thought. Poor execution. Happened right in front of the head coach. And, and also the student section to their delight. I believe Gooden understands it as well as anybody. When you're a great player, you know when you make a bad play. Another rebound for him and Heinrich just running off the tail of Simeon. And he lost it out of bounds. Going to go right back to K-State. So in this portion of the second half, KU not doing a good job of uh, taking care of the basketball, much to the dismay of the coaching staff. Well, they keep pushing, and they keep searching. But that guy right there wants a little more poise. When they get down, and they're pushing the basketball, take care of it. Can't make those mistakes. Probably down the road in some bigger ball game. Atchison again. Gives him eight. Senior season, last year averaged 12 points a ball game, which led this Wildcat team this year coming off the bench. He was an all-bench team in this conference last year. About 15 minutes a ball game. Gooden going to his left. Tapped by the Jesus right back to Boshi. Simeon misses. Wanted a foul on Langford, who banged into Reed. That's just some trying for the trifecta on as many shots. Simeon really establishing. A low post position. He's got 10 points now, John. And he's got five rebounds. Yeah, when the Kansas team gets that rebound, Simeon heads to the other end offensively and gets to that low block in a hurry. Miles going to go to the line. He was just inside the arc, so he'll go to the line for two. First personal foul on Langford. And a fifth team foul on KU. Yeah, Larry Reed goes to the foul line. 22 points tonight. Ties his season high. Also had 22 against Ole Miss. Career high mentioned in the first half. 31 in the big win against the Hawkeyes of Iowa a year ago here at Bramwich. Well, as I mentioned early on, he leads this team in so many categories, and one of which is free throw shooting. 81% from the line. Gooden goes out. Langford goes out. Simeon goes out. So the five on the floor, Miles, Boshi, Collison, Heinrich, and Carey. He is numbers fourth in the league in the assists. Called on to do a lot for this Kansas State team. Run the ball club and score. Still the only one at double figures tonight. Atchison close by with eight. Well, that should have been an offensive foul. That was a little bit of the old uh, what do you call a push-off? Little stiff arm in football, partner. And a, uh, a technical that uh, he wanted. 
Coach Woolridge will uh, watch this one from inside the locker room, but I think he's got reason to be upset. Drunk. To say Jim is chapped is put in mildly. for Jim Waldrich. Well, here's what we're talking about. There is the extension of the weak arm. And it was it was noticeable because it was an isolation for Collison. There's the first technical. And Jim Woolridge is not going to be done after that. Terry Sitton gave him the first one, then he went after Steve Olson, and Steve gave him the second one. You know, most coaches will talk when you're on the lower half of a conference. Sometimes you don't get the whistles that you would like to get. And when you're at home, you would uh, hope you pick up a few calls, and they haven't really gotten many tonight. It would not have changed uh, the way this game has been scored. Let's take a break. 11 21 left in the ball game. And Jim Woldridge is gone after two technicals, all Kansas. There is Mike Miller, graduate of East Texas State. He is the uh, associate head coach, and right now he's the interim head coach in this ball game. Head coach at Southwest Texas for six years, was an assistant three years prior to that under Jim Woldridge. Atchison knocks it down. Now Atchison is in double figures. Two players for K-State. Reed and Atchison in double digits. Well, you can see how Atchison can be so dangerous on the offensive end. Quick dribble, elevates in a hurry, and uh, the release is quick. Collison with an air ball. Atchison will push it up. Seabrand on a sprint to the hoop. We'll get it to him along the baseline, and they'll pull it back out. with the crossover. Oh, this is to Seabrand, and he scores it. Interesting thing with Seabrand around the hoop. Now, if you've noticed, he puts the ball up with his left hand. He shoots his free throws right-handed. Yep. Very versatile. Got to make sure he finishes plays up. Quentin DeCannon with the foul. Yeah, that's in the ability to use a crossover dribble. Very similar to Larry Reed. Good off the dribble, the penetration. Good pass, good finish. Carey will go out. It's going to be Gooden and Collison inside. Langford, Bochi, and Miles, the three guards in the floor. So Bochi goes to the line, 14 points tonight. He is uh, three or four from the free throw line. In his senior season, 81% free throw shooter. When you look at what they're shooting tonight, almost 87% from the line, 58% from the field, and 63% from three-point line. Yeah, last Monday against Missouri, 62% from the field, 62% from beyond the three-point line, 91% from the free throw line. This is a team hitting on all cylinders on both ends of the floor right now. Reed back out in the corner, but Buchanan was not set to put up the three. A couple of dribbles, misses, gets his own foul. Williams was fouled. You know, Ron, we, we talk in the, the college football about how bad the BCS is, and we talk about how great March Madness is. I would 
wouldn't mind just having a BCS one time and let's put Kansas and Duke and see who wins. We're going to have March Madness. It's going to be fun. You never know if those two teams meet at the final at the final stop, but it sure would be fun if we had BCS just one time in college hoops because these two teams are dynamite, Duke and Kansas. They're really perking right now. Weak side help from Miles. He dish it back out and count the hoop for Nick Williams. Freshman out of Mansfield, Texas. Very, very athletic. Miles with an offensive foul. Second one on him. That'll be 16 fouls on the Jayhawks. Under 10 minutes left in the ball game. Kansas with a commanding lead, but the putback by Pasco. K-State chipping away. Well, and you like the passion that this Wildcat team is playing with and the student body staying in this ballgame. Langford got by Reed. And that'll be Buchanan who grabs down the rebound. So one and out again for Kansas. Oh, what a pass by mine. Buchanan against Bochy missed it. Reed on the foul. Seabrand not ready for that pass, but he'll score it. And again, shoots it with his left hand. A little energy since uh, Coach Woolridge appeared at half court. But then Gooden <laughs> decides he's going to quiet the crowd. <laughs> they, they boo him, but... <laughs> oh, boy. That's that false security. You get so happy you scored on one end, and you get that home run shot going back, and you go, wait a second. Wait, where did I go by me? Yeah, Drew Gooden now with 13 points. Andrew has five rebounds. Buchanan, that ball did everything to go down to Buchanan got punched in the eye. Gooden is down. The pull up by Miles. Seabrant will get it. They have to take a timeout. I'm not sure. Buchanan can't see. That poked in the left eye. She picked up the foul. She picked up the foul. Second foul on uh, Jeff. Eighty-one fifty-six. trips where whistle has maybe not favored though she didn't get the call on one end and he picked it up on the other end might have been what he was talking about Reed with 24 at 25. Let's take a break. 81-57, the number two team in the land. As Drew Gooden tries to quiet this crowd. And I storyline for tonight's ball game. Look at the numbers on Kansas. 23 assists on 30 field goals. Heinrich just very, very complete. Jim Aldridge ejected 11-21 of the second half. And Larry Reed, 25 points. He has done it all for the Wildcats this evening. Kansas season high in the assist category is 27. Back on December 22nd against North Dakota. Well, since Jim uh, was ejected, K-State has outscored Kansas 12-7. Mm -hmm. Pascal knocked it out of bounds. Pass intended for good. inside the college. Boshi for three. Pasco. Good rebound. Yep. Very nice. Very physical.
puts it on the floor, shows that he is a good quick step to the hoop. Two terrific plays by Pasco with strength. One rebounding, that time taking it to the hoop. Inside to Collison, the bounce pass. The, uh, both officials were on sighting, so they go with the jump out, and uh, the possession error said, let's go the other way. It'll be K-State ball. Going under seven minutes left in this one, 81 to 60. Well, how effective Larry Reed has been with the dribble. Put a little high screen for it. Can either go over the top or not use it. Talked about his ability to cross over. The dribble, make a quick move. And then the ability to jump sideways. So he misses charging into Collison. Langford with his second foul. And it's 19 fouls against KU in the ballgame. 18 fouls against K-State. They can take it under 20, John. It's been a while since it's been there, and he does it. Williams trying to get after Heinrich, and he's going to be called for a hand check. So the one and one, and Heinrich will go to the line and try to improve on his 17-point performance. He's perfect at the line this evening, four of four. Seabrand comes in, and Camby will go to the bench. Big smile on Kirk Emmerich's face as a proud uh, chance Harry Potter to him. And he uses some of his own wizardry, as young uh, Potter did in the movie or the book. Uh, he, he's, as, he's as popular as Harry is on the, right, okay. on the large campus. Yep. Nineteen. Now for Heinrich. Way beyond the arc. Wow. Atchison. <laughs> He's got a couple that are in the 26-foot range tonight. He's almost out of bounds shooting that ball. Collison against Seabrand reverses it. Now take a look where Finest Atchison spots up just inside the out-of-bounds line. Look at the R on that ball. What would you guess? 23 feet. Mm -hmm. Three fouls on Pasco. Now 10 team fouls on the Wildcats. Double bonus for Collison. Of all the things that Nick really does a nice job of, the free throw line has not been his forte. 56% yeah, from the foul line this season. Gets the first, misses the second ball, tipped out, and Heinrich couldn't get to it. But he looks over at Langford and says, good job, nice try. at 6.15 and counting. Atchison against Boshi. Well, Atchison and Reed have been effective in the last five minutes. Off the dribble. Bob passed to Pasco and behind him and too quick. He to put it up over the hoop. Pasco had an easy jam. Well, Seabrand looked one way and Pasco, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I thought he wanted a, a bounce pass. Turnover's now 15 against KU, 16 against K-State. There it is. Password knocked away by Heinrich. For the last time to win here in Manhattan, January the 29th, 1983. At this building that we're playing in tonight, Brandon's Coliseum is open in 89. So you got to go a long way back. 18 years, Kansas trying to make it 19 straight years to win here in Manhattan. Good. 
Drew Pascoe's got to be careful. Threw an elbow high, and he's got to. Uh, he just I, called I a double take. No, and I don't like to call. Gooden's fine. Gooden got his foot locked. His Seabrett was on the floor in the offensive end. He makes a basket. Purvis Pascoe throws an elbow at Drew Gooden, and I'm watching him come down the floor. Pascoe got in Gooden's face. Should not have been a technical on Gooden. Watch Seabrance down. Now look at Gooden's foot. Locked up. Still makes a basket. Pasco jumps over the top. There's one little swing. And now they're just talking. It gets a little more personal right in it. Shoulder thrust. So they sorted out with the scorer's table and also with the coaches. I assume they're sorting it out, but a technical foul called against Pasco and also against Collison. Collison sits down. Well, I, I like what uh, Roy Williams is doing with Drew Good. You, you let him cool off. He really didn't cause anything to happen. And he will probably shortly get back in the ballgame. straight to the bench almost as if that is a team rule yeah. that if you receive a technical you're coming out of the contest. And it looked like uh, you can't even plead your case on that. <laughs> <laughs> Indefensible. 86 to 68. Not to go under five minutes left. Well you like how this Wildcat team has hung in there. Well Jim Wolters had said on the two wins that they had this week that his team, even when they lost before that, as Heinrich knocks down a three, that this team was playing better. And they're showing tonight Hart, but they are severely outmanned by this Jayhawk basketball team. Heinrich now with 22. Yeah, another big basket, big shot by Heinrich. He makes the big plays when they need it. Atchison can't get it, but Simeon on the rebound. fouled by Atchison and it's got to be a nightmare because you know when he gets the ball after the rebound on the wing he is going to sprint it down the floor and if you're the, a defender you say I don't want to see well that pretty again. much like a running back he surveys what's going on defensively and as the team's running back he's looking for holes and slots to get into and he can find them in a hurry Seabrand with his fourth foul Camby's going to come back into the lineup De Barossa will come back in yeah, that Harry Potter kid, he played the main, main uh, game of that Quidditch they played. And Heinrich uh, he compares that to basketball a little bit. Boy, impressive numbers. Night in, night out. Kirk, a junior out of Sioux City, Iowa. Played for his father, Jim, at Sioux City West. State championship. to the zone defense to see if they can get to Reed sooner when he's open from the outside. He's the one you want to find. Reed got Boshi in the air. That's for three. And too hard and a rebound inside by Heinrich. Center coming up immediately following the ball game. Carl Ravitch and Rich Eisen and uh, the spotlight. Uh, Vince Carter and Alan Iverson are predicting Super Bowl 37 and question of the night. Best championship finish? Well, if you want to predict Super Bowl uh, 37, call Hank Stram, former Chiefs coach. I heard on the radio today he has uh, predicted the winner 34 of 36 times. He picked the Patriots the other night. That's pretty good, isn't it? No, would you? That's something you tell someone after you've I started it. That's what I was going to ask you. Was that before or after? I don't know. I just heard driving over here. And Hank Stram's picked 34 of 36. So. Heinrich with 26 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, and he's 10 of 10 for the free throw line. Andy with the uh, screen outside. De Barossa back over in the corner to read. De Barossa again. De Jesus, a good shooter. Left side of the floor. 
Good stroke. Williams with eight now. Say one thing about the home folks, they have stayed here, although they are well behind as Simeon knocks down two more. Simeon with a dozen. Well, they've got to be proud of their ball club's effort to get behind and bury yourself early against Kansas and to hang in there. That's tough to do as a player. And sometimes tougher as a fan. They've stayed in there. Looks Bill Snyder in attendance tonight, visited with him. And Ask him how recruiting was going because National Letterman Tent Day is on Wednesday. And he said, you know, I think we're doing well, but I will tell you in two years from now, which is a very <laughs> realistic guy. Let's go to break. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't pull you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And in part by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. And by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. So welcome back to Manhattan. Ron Franklin, John Sunbowl. And there's the story right there. Valiant effort by K-State. You got it under 20 once here in the second half. But it's back to 24, but you have just under three minutes to play. their effort but you cannot say enough about these Jayhawks of KU. Well going for their third straight 100 point performance. Ballard in the ball game also Lee in the ball game and as the shot clock was about to go out and it did wild shot put up by Atchison and it was well off the mark. Last time that they uh, Jayhawk team, 1991, 1991 season. They go over 100. 95 now with 2.46 left. And you take those teams and then you put the teams this year Missouri, Colorado, Kansas State. It's tougher to do it in conference. Everybody knows you, knows how you play. Carey gets it off to Ballard. Two and a half left. Round on Saturday, they had 100 with just under four minutes to go and didn't score the rest of the way. Here's Nash. Shot clock is under 10. Counting down at seven. Now at six. Lee. And Lee's going to go to the free throw line. He's a 50% free throw shooter. Played his uh, high school basketball and football with Aaron Miles up in Portland, Oregon. So Lee is on the scoreboard and now Nash as I look down this massive number of players Nash and Ballard I believe the only two who have not scored and of course they've just come into the line. That's amazing though 26 for Heinrich 16 for Boshi 15 for Drew Good. think of this remaining schedule for KU can they run the table where well, there there's talk now and obviously every game means something Texas Tech uh, with Bobby Knight comes to Lawrence and then uh, next Monday Ron will be down in Austin Texas I think the Longhorns will be ready you got Baylor Iowa State and then the final one at Missouri where they have not won in the last couple of years always a challenge but uh, this Kansas team different than the past couple of years. More weapons offensively, share the basketball. 26 assists tonight. Kappelman and Harrison come into the lineup. And also uh, Chris Zerbe, number 34. Senior out of Andover, Kansas. So Roy Williams getting some playing time for a lot of youngsters that, that don't get to see playing time. Not very often. Anymore. This is Ballard, dishes it off. Atchison comes away with the steal. 
Just under 90 seconds to play. And I think Kansas State can uh, continue to build with their build. When you beat Texas and Oklahoma State, I think they've played well, especially the second half. They did not give up. They did not give in to this Kansas team. They played them hard toe-to-toe -to -toe the second half. They can take uh, some confidence away from this ball. John, some real big ball games coming up because when you look at that log jam between Missouri, Texas, and uh, Texas Tech at five and three, and uh, then how about Colorado Baylor and Nebraska and Texas A&M and K State all at three and five? Oh. Yeah, conference play—they all kind of bunch up, don't they? And it's always one of those things where you pick up a newspaper and say, wow, I can't believe that team knocked off that one or that game was that close. But conference play, and you know this all so well, having played four years at Missouri, <laughs> there are just certain places you don't want to go at certain nights. It doesn't matter how much of a, of a favorite you are in the ballgame. You know, big wins are when you go on the road, especially like Oklahoma winning at Texas this weekend. You can get wins like that. That is huge. You hold yourself up to standings. Oklahoma, an outstanding team. Six and two in this conference. Second to Kansas at uh, eight and zero. Oh. Kansas soon to go nine and zero. Oh. Pasco goes out of the ball game. Nice job by that young man tonight. He is a he's a physical force in the lineup. Eight points, only three rebounds. I thought he had more than that, but it's a home score, so we'll definitely think that that's right on. Williams, the freshman. I think he's going to turn into a really fine player. The Jesus along the baseline, and he stepped on the end line. So updated is going to be Kansas 9 0, then Oklahoma. And as we've talked about, Tech, Missouri, and Texas at 5 and 3, Oklahoma State at 4 and 5. And a big meeting between Texas Tech and Stillwater and Oklahoma State on Wednesday. And Wednesday night, Missouri uh, got healthy yesterday. Big win at home against Virginia. Important to Quinn Snyder and his staff. Cam Rush, Kareem Rush was outstanding yesterday, 26 points. And the whole bench comes up. These are guys who work very hard in practice, don't get to play a lot, and everybody cheering for their teammates. Todd from Augusta, Kansas. In and out, not there, and here comes Lee. And the lob down court, and they lost it out of bounds. Well, they probably would like 100. Coaching staffs don't worry about it. Fans and players wouldn't mind it, but the Kansas State student body doesn't want them to get one of them. Zerby lost the ball, and he got bumped in the nose or in the lip. In fact, he's checking to see if there's blood, and the clock runs out, and this one will go in the books. Victory number nine of the year for the Kansas Jayhawks. Final score, Kansas 98 and K-State 71. Coming up next is SportsCenter. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Ron Franklin saying so long, everybody, from Manhattan, Kansas. Center.